Gamers everywhere have had the chance to immerse themselves in a fully immersive virtual world since the advent of the revolutionary Nerve Gear. One of the newest titles available for the system is Sword Art Online, which provides access to the fantastical realm of Aincrad, a vibrant medieval setting where players are free to explore to the limit of their imaginations. The release of this global phenomenon has made gaming feel more realistic than before. It is the year 2022 and humans have been able to develop a true virtual world. This has brought about the development of virtual games. With the help of a system known as Nerve Gear, humans are able to run the virtual world seamlessly. A software developer, Akihiko has built a game known as Sword Art Online which has great prospects. All the beta testers of the game have commended its uniqueness. The game is launching today and all the 10,000 copies that were released have been sold in under 10 seconds. We see a young boy, Kirito, who is a gamer inside his room. He is waiting for the launch of the game. He is monitoring this with the stopwatch in his room. Kirito was a beta tester for the game, so he's quite intrigued to see what the full package comes with. Once the game comes online, Kirito plugs in the nerve gear, lays down on his bed, and logs into the game. He and several other gamers arrive inside the game world, and they all show their excitement at this. While he is running around the alley, a gamer, Klein approaches him and asks him if he is a beta tester because he appears to know his way around, and Kirito says yes. Klein wants Kirito to teach him some basic things to do inside the game, and Kirito accepts. He takes him to a field where he can wild boars to gain X. Klein finds this hard to do, but Kirito shows him how it is done and in no time, he eliminates the wild boar. Klein is very happy, but Kirito tells him that the boar is equivalent to a slime in other games. Klein is shocked to hear this because it literally took him minutes to defeat something that will only give little X. Kirito assures him that he will become better once he has mastered the game. There are different skills in the game, but there is no magic to boot. They continue to take out monsters to gain XP. During this, Kirito reveals that he was only able to get to the 8th floor during the beta testing. Apparently, there are 100 levels in the game. Kirito talks about how he took the game like the real world. He devoted his time to the game and this was the only place he felt like he mattered. After so many hours of hunting, Klein feels the need to eat and plans on logging out. He is to meet some of his gamer friends later, and he asks Kirito if he would be interested but he says no. Klein doesn't take offense in this and he prepares to log out. He accesses the system menu but finds out that there is no logout option in the menu. Kirito says it must be a bug as all games should have the exit or logout option. The duo is worried about this because there is no game master that they can call for assistance. Klein thinks of ripping off the nerve gear but Kirito reminds him that they can't move their bodies in the real world once they are in the virtual world. The nerve gear takes care of this. Just then the alarm bell goes off forcing everyone to teleport to the announcement region of the game. A dome covers the entire region and the Game Master shows up. The Game Master welcomes everyone to his game world and introduces himself as the game developer. Akihiko. He announces that the log option missing in the game is not a glitch. He put it there intentionally. They cannot leave the game, and if someone in the real world tries to remove the nerve gear on their heads, the receiver in the nerve gear will emit a powerful burst of microwave radiation that will destroy the gamer's brain, thus ending his or her life. Some of the gamers believe that he is lying, but he shows live news that showcases the number of people that have died from such attempts. A total of 213 players have died because of this. Everyone in the outside world has also been warned of this, and no one will dare try to take the nerve gear off their heads. Akihiko then adds that once their HP reaches zero, their avatar will be permanently erased, and they will also die in real life, due to the nerve gear destroying their brain. The only way for them to leave the game is to clear the game. They must get to level 100 and defeat the final boss before being given access to leave the game. Each floor has its own boss so they need to defeat each floor boss before proceeding to the next. Klein is surprised by this because even the beta testers didn't get close to level 100. The game master activates something that shows the players real faces. Everyone is able to see what they actually look like. The game master wishes everyone success and leaves. It dawns on everyone that what they are facing is the reality of things. Kirito realizes the urgency of things. He leaves the announcement area and drags Klein with him. He informs Klein that he is heading to the next village to clear in order to get supplies and exp that will help him survive. He wants Klein to come with him so that they can get their levels up quickly. However, Klein says he has some friends he can't leave behind and he needs to go back for them. He tells Kirito that he will be fine. Kirito is not ready to take any risks, so he decides to leave, even though it is hard for him to do so. He starts running to the village, and he cuts down monsters on his way. It is now December 2022, and one month has passed since the launching of the game. 2,000 people have died since then. Even after spending a month playing the game, no one has been able to clear the first floor. Kirito even finds it hard to find the boss room. However, they have a meeting that evening on how to clear the first floor. Later that evening, everyone is gathered for the meeting. 
they are welcomed by a guy named Diabel who claims that his party has found the boss's room which is at the top of the tower. They need to defeat the boss to be able to get to the next level. The first thing to do is to divide themselves into a party of six. Kirito hears this and realizes that he is in trouble because he has always been a solo player. He hasn't associated himself with anyone since the game started. He looks to his side and sees a girl wearing a hood who is also sitting alone, and he deduces that he can form a party with her. He proposes the op of being his party member to her and she accepts the invitation. After she has accepted the invite, Kirito is able to see the girl's name, and he realizes that her name is Asuna. Once everyone is done forming their party, Diabel is about to continue when he is stopped by a guy named Kabao. Kabao claims that all the beta testers should apologize to the dead 2,000 people. He claims that the beta testers ignored those who were beginners and left them for dead. He wants the testers to also hand over the supplies that they have gathered as payment for what they have done. Just then, another gamer, Agil, stands up to speak. He reminds Kabao that the testers have no responsibility for taking care of others. Everybody received a guidebook on how to about the game in the beginning, so he has no right to blame the testers. After hearing this, Kabao realizes that he has been defeated, and he retires to his seat in shame. With this, Diabel continues with the briefing. He tells them everything they need to know about the boss and who is protecting the boss. He informs them that they will meet the next day to defeat the boss. With this, he dismisses everyone. That night, Asuna and Kirito sit down together to share a meal. He gives Asuna cream to spread on her bread to make it more tasty. He reveals that he got the cream as a result of defeating a particular monster, and he can even show Asuna where the monster is. Asuna then says she didn't come to the town because of a good meal. She just wants to make sure that she doesn't lose in the game. The following day, which is the 3rd of December, everyone marches to the tower where the boss is located. Kirito explains to Asuna how things will be done. He tells her their attack strategy and how to counter the boss. Boss. Shortly afterward, the group makes it to the tower and a fight breaks out between the boss and the players. Diabel calls out attack formations for the parties to attack. After dealing much damage to the boss, Diabel heads in to finish the job so he can get the rare item from the last attack bonus. However, the boss changes things up when he brings out a large weapon that they were not expecting. It is too late for Diabel to retreat, and he gets hit by the boss. Diabel is thrown to the floor, and Kirito runs to where he is. Kirito finds out that Diabel was also a beta tester, and this is how he knew about the rare item. As Diabel is about to get extinguished, he begs Kirito to defeat the boss for everyone's sake. His HP reads to zero, and he dies in Kirito's arms. The death of Diabel infuriates Kirito, and he makes up his mind that he will defeat the boss. He goes after the boss with Asuna assisting him. During the fight, Asuna's cape is cut off to reveal her beautiful long hair. After the two have damaged the boss very well, the rest of the players join in to fight the boss until Kirito is able to recover. Once Kirito has recovered, he goes after the boss again and cuts it down. He gets the bonus for defeating the boss and everyone thanks him because they wouldn't have been victorious if not for him. Everyone starts clapping for Kirito, but Kabao ruins everything again. He claims that Diabel's death is on Kirito because he knows everything about the boss and refuses to share. Kirito is about to start defending himself, but he realizes that there is no need for that. He decides to take the path of the villain. He scolds Kabao and the rest of the players. He reveals that he knows more than they do and he doesn't care anymore. He opens the menu and activates the equipment he got for defeating the boss, which is a battle robe. He reveals that he doesn't want anything to do with them again. As he starts to leave, Asuna tries to stop him but he won't listen. He proceeds to dissolve the party he has formed with Asuna and tells her to join a much stronger party. With this, Kirito says goodbye and leaves Asuna. Fast forward to April 8th of 2023, a party is seen thanking Kirito for saving them when they were in need of help. The leader of the guild, Keita, suggests that he join their party so he can be of help to them. They ask him what his level is, and he lies to them that it is level 20, whereas he is way above that. Kirito is already in level 40 as of the time he is talking to them, but he doesn't want them to know how strong he is. After much conviction, Kirito agrees to join their party. On the 9th of May, 2023, Kirito and his party were already on the 20th floor. The party is seen battling a monster in the Sunshine Forest. With Kirito's help, they are able to successfully defeat the monster. After the battle, they find out that some parties have already cleared the 28th floor. These parties are called the Frontliners. They have acquired so many points and X, but they are refusing to share. That night, Keita informs the party that they now have enough money to buy a new house, and this excites the party members. They have plans to also upgrade Sachi's weapon. Sachi is also their party member, but she appears to be the weakest. On May 16th, 2023, on the 28th floor, Kirito ran into Klein and his party members at the Wolf Plains. Klein is surprised to find out that Kirito now has a party, 
Carito doesn't really talk to Klein, and he leaves. On his way to where his mission is, he gets a message from Keita that Sachi is missing, and they are going out to find her in the labyrinth. Carito gets the message, and he treats it with all urgency. He activates his tracker skill, and he uses this to locate where Sachi is hiding out. Sachi is surprised that Carito is able to find her. Sachi then reveals that she's scared of dying. She sees herself as the weak link in the team, and reveals her fear of dying. Carito assures her that he is always there to protect her. He will make sure that she clears the game and survives at the end, he says. Sachi hears Kirito's assurance and tears drop from her eyes. Later that night, Sachi decides to spend the night in Kirito's room. The following day, the party moves to a new town to buy a house. The party leader then reveals that they will be moving to the labyrinth on the 27th floor to hunt. This will give them more items. Kirito tries to protest against this and asks why they are abandoning their usual hunting grounds. Keita claims that they have increased their levels and this should help them in defeating high-rank monsters. Shortly afterward, they arrive on the 27th floor. They access the room very easily and this comes as a shock to Kirito. They see a treasure chest in the middle of the room and the party members rush in before Kirito can stop them. The moment everyone is inside the room, the door closes behind them and the room color changes to red. Monsters appear from all corners of the room and surround the team. They realize that they have fallen into a trap and try to use the transport crystal, but it won't work. The monster bombards the team and starts eliminating them one by one. Kirito fights so hard, but it is not enough to protect the team. Sachi and every other person in the team gets annihilated right in front of Kirito. Kirito. Fast forward to December 24th of 2023, we get to find out that Kirito survived the labyrinth and he has been leveling up much quicker ever since. An information broker informs him that a particular boss will appear that night, which is Christmas Eve, and it will come bearing a rare item. Kirito gets ready to solo the boss, and this shocks the broker. Kirito plans to solo the boss because he heard that the item he possesses is a revival item. He wants to use this item to revive Sachi back into the game. The risks attached to this are great, but he doesn't care. Later that night, Kirito heads to the Forest of Wandering, which is located on the 35th floor where the boss will be. Upon getting there, he finds out that Klein and his party members have been following him. Klein doesn't want him to risk his life for something that is not confirmed, but Kirito is too stubborn to care. Just then, another party, the Divine Dragons, shows up. Klein and his party have no choice but to try and hold down the invading party to give Kirito a chance to try and defeat the boss. Kirito heads to the boss area to engage him. Soon afterward, he returns to find out that Klein and his party have managed to chase away the invading part. Kirito returns with the item in hand, but he looks very sad. He throws the item to Klein and tells him to use it on the next person who dies in front of him. Apparently, the item is only useful within the first 10 seconds of the player's death. Kirito starts to leave, and Klein can see the sadness in his eyes. He tries to stop him, but he can't. Upon getting home that night, Kirito receives a pre-recorded voice message from Sachi, wishing him a happy Christmas. Sachi informs him in the message not to blame himself if she ever dies. She has accepted the fact that she is weak and can die any time, but she doesn't want Kirito to blame himself. She thanks Kirito for his help and bids him farewell. Tears fall from his eyes as he listens to the last of the recorded voice messages. It is now the 23rd of February. A girl, Silica, is seen leaving her party because she is not given the items that she is supposed to collect. She has a pet that has healing abilities. After leaving her party, she soon runs into some monsters who give her a tough time. Her pet, Pina, has used up her healing abilities and things are not looking good for Silica because her health bar is running low. Pina gets hit by the monsters and it dies, leaving just a feather. The monsters are about to deliver the finishing blow when Kirito shows up and saves Silica. He eliminates the monsters with ease and this amazes Silica. She shed tears because of the death of her pet. However, she still thanks Kirito for his help. Kirito tells Silica to stop crying because she can still save Pina as long as she has her heart. There is a place in the southern part of the 47th floor called the Hill of Memories, and the flower that blooms at the top can revive a pet. Silica doesn't have enough level to get there yet, and the option to revive a pet goes away in three days. Kirito decides to help with items that she will need before they visit the Hill of Memories. Silica is happy that Kirito is even offering to go with her. Kirito says he is helping Silica because she looks just like his younger sister. They get into town, and Silica runs into some of her old party members. She holds Kirito tight to show them that she wants nothing to do with them again. She runs into another of her ex-party members who like to pick on her. Kirito tells Silica to ignore the redhead. They sit down for a drink, and Kirito tells Silica that there are different players with different personalities in the game. He explains to Silica that the normal players have a green icon on their heads, but those who have committed a crime have an orange icon on their heads. However, 
any player with the red icon showing on his head implies that he has killed another player. Silica is surprised that there are some players who enjoy eliminating other players. That night, Kirito goes to Silica's room to tell her more about the fourth floor. He has an item called the Mirage Sphere with him to help show Silica the routes that they will be taking. Kirito suddenly has the feeling that someone is listening to them, and he rushes out of the room to check, but he doesn't see anybody. Silica says someone cannot hear them once the door is locked. But Kirito informs her that some people have a listening skill that allows them to override that option. They even level up their skill very well so that they can listen to other players more easily. Kirito starts to wonder why someone will bother to listen to them. The following day on the 24th, the two proceed to Floria, which is also on the 47th floor. The entire area is filled with flowers. Kirito gives Silica a transport crystal and asks her to jump to another town in case of an emergency. They continue on the path that leads to the Hill of Memories. Suddenly a monster grabs Silica's leg and she starts to scream. Kirito assures her that the monster is weak and she can defeat it. She swings her sword at the monster and ultimately defeats it. The two continue on their journey and they defeat monsters on their way. Silica decides to ask about Kirito's sister. Kirito then reveals that the person he was talking about is not actually his sister, but his cousin. However, they grew up together and she has no idea that she is not Kirito's direct sister. Their grandpa once put them in a kendo dojo, but Kirito quit the dojo. His grandpa beat him for it, but his sister stops him. She offers to work hard for the two of them. Kirito has always felt inferior for making his sister work so hard just to cover for the two of them. He considers helping Silica as a means to amend his mistakes. Silica then tells him that he doesn't need to make amends because there is no way he can perform in something that he doesn't like. Kirito thanks Silica for always consoling him. A monster grabs Silica, but Kirito easily saves her. The duo soon makes it to their desired destination, and Silica is amazed when the flower blooms in her presence. Silica picks up the flower, and Kirito suggests that they revive Pina once they get back to town because there are lots of monsters in the area. As they start to return home, Kirito realizes that there is someone hiding behind the trees. He demands that the person show his or herself. It turns out to be the redhead, Rosalia. She is surprised that Kirito can see through her hide skill. Rosalia demands that Silica hands over the flower, but Kirito says there will be no room for that. He is able to see through Rosalia's disguise that she has an orange icon instead of a green one. Rosalia is surprised that Kirito still went ahead with Silica on her mission after she knows the type of person she is. Kirito is well aware that it was one of her guild members who was eavesdropping yesterday. Rosalia's actual guild is known as the Titan's Head, and they are all orange players in the team. Kirito then tells Rosalia that he has been looking for her. He reminds her that she once attacked a guild called the Silver Flags and only the leader of the guild survived. The leader of the guild began begging for someone to help him and bring Rosalia to justice. Rosalia hears this and calls out the rest of her men who are in hiding. Kirito tells Silica to ready the crystal and run when he tells her to. Kirito unsheathes his sword and walks toward the lot. Upon seeing his sword and black clothes, they are able to deduce that he is the black swordsman who solos monsters and even bosses. They get scared but Rosalia assures them that they there is no way a frontliner will be down there with them. The group attacks Kirito until they start breathing heavily, but their attacks don't seem to have any effect on Kirito. Kirito then tells the group that he is at level 78 and he has a high amount of HP, which means if he remains still and they continue to attack him all day, they still will not be able to defeat him. He brings out a transport crystal that will take the group to prison and suggests that they surrender peacefully. Rosalia tries to fight Kirito, but Kirito easily dodges her attack and points his sword at her neck telling her that he can easily end her. With this, Kirito is able to defeat the group and get them to surrender. Later that day, Kirito helps Silica revive Pina, and he tells her that he is done with his mission and will be returning to the front lines. Silica reveals that she will miss Kirito, and Kirito assures her that they have now become friends. On March 6, 2024, the group of frontliners gathers for a meeting on how to clear a certain area and the boss. Asuna is the vice commander of the Knights of Blood Guild, and she is the one in charge of the operation. She wants to use NPCs as a way to lure in the boss to defeat him, but Kirito doesn't want this. Asuna tells Kirito that he has no choice but to follow her rules since she is the officer in charge of the operation. Everyone can feel the tension between the two. It is very obvious that Asuna is acting this way toward him because of how he left her in the beginning. Asuna has leveled up, and she has been able to get herself a top position in one of the top guilds. The following month after the meeting, Asuna finds Kirito resting under a tree. She scolds Kirito for being lazy when the other frontliners 
engineers are busy clearing the labyrinth. Kirito suggests that she join him because the weather is nice. After saying this, he continues sleeping. Asuna thinks hard about this and joins Kirito. Kirito wakes up to find Asuna beside him. He is surprised to see this, but he doesn't wake her because he is well aware that she needs the rest. Asuna sleeps so much that she doesn't wake up until the evening of the next day. Kirito keeps guard all through the time that she is sleeping so no one would challenge her to a duel and steal her things. Any player can challenge her and use her hand to press the OK button. She will just be a free kill for anyone who finds her. When Asuna wakes up, she is grateful to Kirito for protecting her and she decides to buy him food so that they can be even. They visit a restaurant to get something to eat. They talk about how players are safe when they are inside town. Duels are the only way to defeat a player when they are in the inner area. Suddenly they hear a scream from outside. The two run outside to find a player hanging from the church window. He has a spear in his chest. Kirito runs toward him to try and catch him while Asuna heads into the church to try and cut him down. However, before the two can get to him, the player loses all of his HP and dies. Kirito and Asuna know that the only way to eliminate a player in the inner area is through duels. Kirito tells the people around to check for the winner's notification, but no notification is seen. Kirito and Asuna check inside the tower for clues, but they find nothing. Asuna states that the investigation is their priority for now, because it would be disastrous if the players find out that someone can be eliminated in the inner areas. Kirito agrees to work with Asuna till they figure out who the culprit is and solve the case. They go outside to ask the people outside to tell them what they saw. One lady, Yoko, steps out to reveal that she came to have dinner with the man. Canes, who was just annihilated. They used to be in the same guild, but they have now separated due to certain reasons. Yoko claims that she saw someone behind Canes when he was hanging out of the church window. However, she has no idea who the culprit might be. They decide to escort Yoko to her lodgings before continuing with the investigation. After they have delivered Yoko safely, Kirito suggests that they visit someone with appraisal eyes to help them check the murder weapon to find out who owns it. They proceed to a merchant shop to ask the store owner, whom Kirito is familiar with, to help with the appraisal eye skill. Upon getting to the shop, the merchant, Agil, is surprised to see Kirito with Asuna. After he is recovered from his shock, he settles down to help them. He uses his appraisal eyes on the spear and he is able to deduce that the weapon is player-made. He tells them that the weapon was made by a player named Grimlock. Asuna tells Agil to hold on to the weapon while they continue their investigation. The following day, they call Yoko to a meeting to ask her if she knows who Grimlock is and she says yes. She says Grimlock is a member of the guild that she and Kane once belonged to. She then reveals what brought about the separation of their guild which is known as the Golden Apple. She narrates that they once defeated a boss who dropped a very rare item. There is a squabble among the team whether to use it for the guild or sell it. They decided to vote on this. There were eight members in the guild and five voted on selling it while the other three opposed this. Their leader, Griselda, decided to visit a merchant town and sell the item as agreed upon. However, she never came back and they later found out that she had died. After her story, Kirito says the culprit will be among the three opposed to the selling of the ring. There is the possibility that they attacked her before the ring was sold and they stole it. When the two ask Yoko who Grimlock is, she reveals that Grimlock is Griselda's husband in the game. The two were a great couple, and if Grimlock is the one who terminated Kane, he must be after the three who opposed the selling of the item. She then lets the cat out of the bag to tell them that she was part of the three people who opposed the selling of the item. She tells them that the third person is Schmidt. Asuna and Kirito know Schmidt because he is now a member of the Divine Dragon and he leads their defense forces. Yoko suggests that they set up a meeting with Schmidt because he doesn't know what is currently happening. Later that night, Schmidt meets with the trio and he is shocked to find out about everything that is happening. They're in the middle of this discussion when Yoko stands up and starts to cry that they are all responsible for Griselda's death. They should have just the decision of what to do about the item to her. Her, she says. Yoko moves closer to the window and she is suddenly attacked from behind and eliminated before Kirito can even do anything about it. Kirito spots the culprit running away and he chases after him. However, the culprit uses a teleportation crystal to disappear before he can get to him. Kirito returns to the hotel with the news that he failed to catch the culprit. He is furious because he thought the system would protect them inside the inn, but the culprit still found a way to get to them. Schmidt starts to cry and he says the person that is after them is Griselda's ghost. He says the culprit is wearing Griselda's black robe. Kirito and Asuna decide to leave the inn to clear their heads. Asuna brings out a sandwich that she made by herself. 
She tells Kirito to consume the sandwich quickly because it will soon lose its durability and disappear. Kirito is busy thinking about the events of the day. He says there is no chance the culprit is a ghost because there is no way a ghost will be able to use a transport crystal. The sandwich falls down from Kirito's hands and disappears. This immediately gives Kirito an idea of what is happening. He immediately tells Asuna that he has figured out everything that is happening. They thought they witnessed a murder, but they never did. At that same moment, Schmidt is at Griselda's grave, begging her for forgiveness. Just then, the culprit, who is wearing a hood, appears and demands that Schmidt confess his crime. Schmidt then reveals that he found a note in his pocket telling him to sneak into Griselda's room to save the gateway location of the day they are to sell the item. Another person wearing a hood shows up and Schmidt gets more scared. He states that he never had any plans for Griselda to die. Just then, the two people standing in front of him reveal that they have recorded everything he just said. They take off their capes to reveal that they are Yoko and Kanes. Meanwhile, Kirito has been able to figure out that Yoko and Kanes are alive. He tells Asuna that players cannot lose HP in the inner area, but an object can lose its durability. He explains that Kanes' armor had its durability chipped away with the spear that had been pushed into it. When the armor has lost its durability and is about to disappear, Kane uses a transport crystal to disappear and make it look like he was killed. The same thing happened with Yoko. She never showed them her back throughout the meeting. She was waiting for the sword in her back to destroy her dress so that she could make it look like she died too. The object disappearance looks exactly the same as when a player dies, and this is the reason they were able to easily fake their deaths. They did all this to actually draw out who they think is the culprit, and that is Schmidt. They must have been suspecting him from the start. Kirito asks Asuna to check through her friend list to find out where Yoko is. She informs Kirito that she's out in the field on the 19th floor. Kirito doesn't want to intervene because he wants them to settle their differences themselves. Back in the field, Shimt is still telling the two how he spent the money he received when he is attacked by a paralytic sword by an unknown person. Out of nowhere, the ruthless PK Guild shows up. They are about to eliminate Schmidt when Kirito shows up. He informs them that he didn't want to get involved before, but he later finds out that there is something off. The PK Guild is not ready to take on Kirito and they quietly retreat. After their departure, the trio asks Kiriot how he is able to figure out that they will be attacked. He tells the trio that he figured out that some people will want to take on the advantage that they can now eliminate people in the inner to track the trio and get rid of them. Yoko and Kanes apologize to Kirito for deceiving him, but he says it's all okay. A flashback scene shows some moments before Kirito shows up. He and Asuna sit down in the restaurant to talk. Asuna explains to him that the issue of splitting items is a major problem. Kirito says he is avoiding all of that and this is the reason he is always going solo. Asuna then tells Kirito that the only solution to this is marriage. A couple gets to share their inventory together. They have no chance to hide things from each other. Kirito then asks Asuna what will happen if either of the couple dies. Asuna says the item in their inventory will go to the person left alive. It immediately dawns on Kirito that Grimlock might be the mastermind behind his wife's death since the item will come to his inventory instead of the culprits. To avoid soiling his hands in the dirt, he hired the PK Guild to eliminate Griselda. They are also the same people he has hired to take care of Yoko and her friends. Yoko, Keynes, and Schmidt are surprised to hear this. They cannot believe that Grimlock is responsible for his wife's death. He only cooperated with them to make sure that the case was buried once and for all. While Kirito is telling them this, Asuna searches the woods and she finds Grimlock lurking around. They ask Grimlock to explain himself. He reveals that he and Griselda were couples in real life before entering into the game. He claims that Griselda changed when they entered into the game. She became more lively and she lost sight of who she once was. He didn't want to lose the memories he had with his wife and decided to eliminate her since the game was the only legal way he could do so. Asuna scolds him and says he never felt true love for his wife but the need to possess her. Kirito and Asuna hand Grimlock over to Kane's Yolka, and Schmidt for punishment. After their departure, Asuna and Kirito also prepare to leave. They look back and see Griselda's ghost standing at her graveside, wearing a smile on her face. It is on the 24th of June, 2024, on the 48th floor. Asuna is seen talking to her best friend, Lisbeth, who is a blacksmith and expert in making swords and repairs. After a brief discussion with her, Asuna leaves. Soon afterward, Kirito comes to the shop in need of Liz's help. Liz sees him as someone who doesn't have money, and her reaction to him is quite poor. Kirito informs Liz that he would like her to make the best sword she can for him. He wants Liz to make a sword as powerful or more powerful than his sword. Liz brings out what she claims is her best sword, and Kirito decides to hit it with his sword to see how strong it is. With just minimal effort, Kirito's sword breaks her best sword apart. Liz then tells Kirito that she can make him a good sword as long as she has the right materials to do so. 
It is said that there is a dragon on the 55th floor and the dragon stores rare materials inside its body. These are materials that Liz can use in making the type of sword that Kirito wants. Kirito wants to go alone, but Liz finds a way to trick him into allowing her to follow him to the site. Upon getting there, she is already feeling very cold because of the harsh weather, and Kirito is forced to give his jacket to keep her warm. When they get to the crystal site where the dragon is located, Kirito tells Liz to hide until he defeats the dragon and gets all the materials they need. Liz reluctantly agrees to this and hides behind some crystals. He wonders if Kirito will be able to handle the dragon himself. Kirito charges toward the dragon and hits it with a powerful attack that leaves Liz's mouth wide open. She is surprised to find out that Kirito is stronger than he looks. Liz gets excited and shows her face, causing the dragon to get frantic. It goes after Liz, but Kirito gets in between them. The dragon throws the two into the distance and they end up falling into a deep hole. They wake up to see their HP on the yellow bar. Kirito gives her a health regen potion to take and he takes one himself too. They now have to find a way to get out of the hole that they have fallen into. Kirito thinks of running up the walls, but he soon realizes that it is not feasible when he slips and falls off the wall. The duo has no choice but to spend the night there. That night, Liz asks Kirito why he saved her and he replies with one simple answer. He believes in dying together with someone rather than watching them die. Before sleeping, Liz requests that Kirito hold her hand and he complies. The following morning, Liz wakes up to see Kirito holding the crystalline ingot in his hands. This is the metal they came for and she is surprised to see him holding it causally. He reveals that he dug the ground below them and found it inside. He is able to deduce that the hole they are standing in is the dragon's lair and the metal is the dragon's poop. Liz is surprised to hear this, but the news just brings about another problem. They realize that the dragon is nocturnal and it will want to return to its lair since it's daybreak already. Just then, the dragon starts diving into the hole. Kirito grabs Liz, runs up the wall, and falls on the dragon's back. He then pushes his sword into the dragon's back to force it to fly back into the sky. The dragon flies out of the hole and the two jump off its back once they are out of the hole. While they are floating in the air, Liz uses the opportunity to hold Kirito's hand and tells him that she loves him. Kirito is not able to hear her because of the noise and Liz decides not to repeat herself. She opts to hug Kirito instead. They return to her shop and Liz uses the metal they have gotten to make Kirito a new sword. He wanted a one-handed straight sword and she did exactly that while pouring her soul and strength into the making of the sword. Kirito is amazed by the result that comes with the new sword called the Dark Repulsor. It is time to pay Liz, but Liz decides not to collect any money. Instead, she tells Kirito that she would like to become his official blacksmith. Anytime he wants something done, he should come to her. Whether it is the making of another sword or the repair of his armor and swords, she promises to always be there for him. Moments later, Asuna rushes into the shop telling Liz how worried she is been since yesterday. Liz informs her friends that she has been stuck in a dungeon with Kirito. Asuna hasn't noticed Kirito since she entered, and she just noticed him when Liz pointed in his direction. Asuna reveals that she was the one who told Kirito about Liz's shop. Liz is surprised to find out that the two know each other. She can see the tension between the two, and it isn't too hard for Liz to find out that there is something going on between the two. Liz finds an excuse, and she leaves the shop. Kirito realizes that there is something wrong, and he follows her. He finds her where she is hiding out. Liz tries telling Kirito to forget about everything she said. Kirito thanks Liz for her help and says he wants to continue living because he has met Liz. Liz then tells Kirito to try his best to clear the game. She promises to continue hanging on till then. It is now nearly two years since the game has launched. Kirito is still the solo player that he is, and he is trying his best to clear the game. He is very sure that Akihiko is somewhere watching them struggle in the game world. One day Kirito is walking through the woods when he sees an S-Class Rare Rabbit. This is an ingredient that is very hard to find. Kirito eliminates the rabbit and takes it to Agil's shop with the purpose of selling it. However, Agil convinces him that he already has so much money and it would benefit him to cook the rabbit and enjoy the marvelous tastes that come with it. Kirito argues that he is going to need a good chef who has high cooking skills to bring out the best taste of the ingredients. Just then, Asuna and her bodyguard, Kura Deal, enter the room. It dawns on Kirito that Asuna has cooking skills and she helps out in the situation. Asuna is shocked to see Kirito in possession of a rare ingredient. She agrees to cook it so that they can both eat it. To prepare the meal, Asuna needs the best equipment that she can get. Kirito doesn't have these types of equipment at his place, which means they will have to cook the rabbit at Asuna's place. Kuradil is against Asuna inviting Kirito to her place, but Asuna says it's fine. Kuradil continues to argue until Asuna is forced to order him to stay down for the day. As they approach Asuna's home, Kirito talks about Kuradil and how Asuna left him behind. Asuna says it is okay, but Kuradil wouldn't want to agree because he claims that everything he is doing is part of the guild's policies of protecting their leaders. Asuna mentions how the guild used to be small, 
but suddenly it grew exponentially and things have been weird since then. They enter Asuna's home, and Kirito is shocked to see how expensive the house setting is. She tells him how much everything costs, and Kirito just says he is too poor to live in a place as luxurious as her home. Asuna gets ready to prepare the ingredients, and she suggests that they make a rabbit stew. After minutes of cooking, she finishes up the dish, and the two consume everything in no time. Asuna is happy to have eaten the rabbit meat because that's the first S-class ingredient that she will be tasting in the two years that she has gotten into the game world. She is glad that she survived that long to have tasted the dish. Asuna says people are already getting used to life in sword arts online, and their urge to return to the outside world has reduced. Those at the front line have also reduced because those interested in clearing the game have reduced drastically. However, Asuna still has the intention of leaving the game and returning to the outside world. Asuna mentions that the monsters in the game are getting more dangerous and it would be bad for Kirito to continue going solo. She requests that Kirito form a party with her, and Kirito has no choice but to accept her invitation. On October 18th, 2024, Asuna meets with Kurido on the 74th floor. Kuridil follows her and won't let go alone. He wants them to return to the guild headquarters, but Asuna refuses. He wants to forcefully drag Asuna away, but Kurido stops him. He assures Kuridil that he will protect Asuna. Kuridil is not ready to have any of this, and he suggests a duel between him and Kurido. Kurido has no choice but to accept the challenge. The people watching are excited to see the fight between the two. The match starts, and the two charge at each other. Kuradil aims for Kirito, but Kirito just evades him and destroys his sword instead. Kuradil is shocked to see his sword destroyed in just one swoop of attack. He accuses Kirito of cheating and wants to fight him with another weapon, but Asuna stops the fight and she tells Kuradil to accept his defeat. She then tells Kuradil that he is relieved of his duty until further notice. Kuradil is forced to return to the headquarters in shame, and Kirito is declared the winner of the duel. Meanwhile, there is a member of the PK Guild among the crowd who watched the fight. After Kuradil's departure, Asuna apologizes for involving him in her business, but Kirito says it's okay. Kirito then tells Asuna that he is now ready to work with her because he doesn't want to be a solo player again. Later on, the two go to the labyrinth on the 74th floor. They clear out the map to get to the boss. They decide to take a sneak peek at the boss before they go back to get other players to assist in defeating the monster. They open the boss's room, and they are shocked at what they find. They didn't expect the boss to be that scary and dangerous. The two run out of the room at the sight of the boss. They sit down to take a breather after putting some distance between themselves and the boss's room. They realize that the monster will not be easy to beat. They will also need a lot of players to even be able to go against the monster. Kirito adds that they will need players who use shields to be able to cover their attacks very well. This reminds Asuna of something she has always wanted to ask. She asks Kirito why he uses a one-handed sword but refuses to reinforce it with a shield. Kirito not using a shield defeats the idea of him using a one-handed sword. She wants to know why Kirito doesn't use a shield. Kirito keeps mute, and Asuna realizes that Kirito is not ready to tell her the reason, and she decides to stop asking. She doesn't want to pry into his private skill sets, and Kirito heaves a sigh of relief when he sees that Asuna has given up. Asuna brings out the lunch package she made for them. She has been able to figure out the right ingredients to add together to make spices and food have real-life tastes. Suddenly, Klein and his party show up in the area. Klein is surprised to have run into Kirito at the site. Klein is absolutely blown away to see Kirito with a girl. Even the rest of his party members are amazed at how beautiful Asuna is. They're still in the middle of this when the ALF shows up. This is the Aincrad Liberation Force, and Kovats is one of their top men. He approaches Kirito and asks him if he has mapped out the area, and Kirito says yes. Kovats demands that Kirito hand over the map to him. Klein protests against this, but Kirito says it is fine. He has the intention of making the map public knowledge in the first place. However, he warns Kovats not to engage the boss because it is more dangerous than they envisage. Kovat refuses to heed Kirito's warning, and he orders his already exhausted men to follow him to the boss's room. Kirito, Asuna, and Klein decide to follow the party in case there is anything wrong. Klein begs Asuna to always take care of Kirito, and she agrees to this. Suddenly, they hear screams coming from the boss's room. They run over there to check, and they are surprised to find out that the boss has pinned them down. Kirito tells them to use their transport crystal, and they reply that it is not working. This reminds Kirito of when he was trapped in a boss's room with Sachi and the Black Cat Guild. Even in the face of adversity, Kovat tells his men to continue fighting. The monster knocks Kovat to the ground, leaving his HP depleted. Kirito runs over to check on him, but Kovat dies right in front of him. The rest of the team remains trapped, and Asuna finds it hard to stand back when there are people dying. She runs into the room to engage the boss. Klein and Kirito immediately run after her. She attacks the boss, but he easily deflects the attack. Kirito tries to fight the monster too, but realizes that basic attack and skills will not work on the monster. He has to unleash his secret skills that he has been hiding from everyone. 
He tells Klein and Asuna to keep the boss busy for 10 seconds till he gets his attack sequence ready. Once he is ready, Kirito takes over and activates his double-wielding sword. He unsheathes the other sword that Lisbeth made for him. With his double sword and his star stream skill, he attacks the monster repeatedly. Klein and Asuna's mouths are wide open because they have never seen anyone use the type of skill that Kirito is using. Kirito and the monster go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and Kirito manages to defeat the monster with his HP almost hitting zero. After he defeats the boss, Kirito passes out from exhaustion. Upon regaining consciousness, he sees Asuna sitting beside him with tears in her eyes. She hugs Kirito tight because she thinks she has lost him. Kleane informs Kirito that Kovats and two others died. Klein then demands an explanation for the skill that Kirito used in defeating the boss alone. Kirito reveals that it is an extra skill that appeared out of nowhere. He checked his inventory one day and found it. He was surprised to see this because the option is not unlocked for any other player. Klein is also shocked by this because this makes Kirito the only player with the extra skill. Kirito says he kept it hidden to prevent other players from getting jealous. Klein understands this and says he doesn't blame Kirito for doing what he did. Klein and his men soon leave after everything has been settled. After their departure, Asuna reveals that she will be taking a break from the guild because she wants to get serious with Kirito. Soon afterward, the news of Kirito's extra skill spread among the players. It turns out that Liz has always known about it, but it was a secret between her and Kirito. Suddenly, Asuna runs into the room to inform Kirito that there is a problem. Kirito is summoned by the commander of the Knights of Blood Guild, Commander Heathcliff. He has heard of Kirito's intention to take Asuna away from them, and he doesn't want this. He says Asuna is a valuable player to them, and Kirito will have to defeat him in a duel before he can release Asuna to him. However, if Kirito loses in the duel, he will be joining their guild. Without hesitation, Kirito accepts the challenge. After they leave Heathcliff's presence, Asuna scolds Kirito for accepting the challenge. She reminds him that the commander is also dangerous. He possesses a unique skill which is called the Holy Sword skill which is capable of both offense and defense. His attacks are strong but his defense is particularly overwhelming. There have been no records of his HP entering the yellow bar, not to talk of the red bar. He is literally invincible with all these stats. Asuna is also scared that Kirito will have no choice but to join the Knights of Blood if he loses. Kirito promises to do his best to make sure that he doesn't lose to Heathcliff. The arena is set for the anticipated match between Kirito and Heathcliff. All tickets are sold out and people are still demanding more. The match begins and Kirito goes after Heath ferociously. He can't seem to break his cover because of his shield. Kirito doesn't give up and continues to attack Heath. With their swords clashing at high speed, Kirito manages to break Heath's defense. He hits Heath in the face, reducing his HP. He is about to deliver the deciding blow but gets careless and leaves himself open, giving Heath the opportunity to land a fatal blow and thereby win the duel. After the duel, Kirito is officially recruited to the guild, and he is given their uniform of white robe to wear. Kirito looks completely different because he is used to wearing a black robe. Asuna apologizes for getting him mixed up in her business, but Kirito says it is okay. He's getting tired of being a solo player in the first place, so this is a change of pace for him. Asuna then asks him why he has been avoiding being in a guild. He informs Asuna about the incident that happened to Sachi and the Black Cats. He blames himself for the incident that claimed their lives. He never told them that he was a high-level player so he could warn them about traps and the like. After hearing this, Asuna hugs him and promises to protect Kirito. Soon afterward, Kirito is informed by one of the guild's forward commanders, Godfrey, that he will help to clear the labyrinth on the 55th floor. They will be in a party of three to carry out the mission. Godfrey, Kirito, and one other person will be joining them. Kirito has no choice but to follow Godfrey's instructions. Asuna doesn't want him to go, but he assures her that he will be back before he knows it. Kirito gets to the gate to find out that the third person who will be joining them is Kuradil. Godfrey orders Kuradil to apologize first before anything else, and he obliges. Godfrey then collects their transport and antidote crystals from them because he wants to see how they will manage when they run into trouble. As they get close to the labyrinth, they sit down to take a break. Godfrey hands over their lunch to them. Kurito is thirsty already and he gulps down on the water given to him. The same thing applies to Godfrey. Just then, Kurito looks to his side to see Kuradil wearing a smile. He immediately realizes that there is something wrong. He has ingested the water before he realizes that it contains a paralytic agent. Kirito and Godfrey fall to the ground and Kuradil starts to laugh. Kirito tells Godfrey to make use of the antidote crystal, but before he can touch it, Kuradil stops him. He brings out his sword and starts to attack Godfrey. 
He informs Godfrey that he's going to lie that they were attacked leading to Godfrey and Carito's death. He attacks Godfrey repeatedly till he dies. He then shifts his attention to Carito. He intends to make Carito suffer before ending him. He reveals that he is a member of the PK Guild. Carito is surprised as to how Kuradil made it into the Knights of Blood. He starts to push his sword into Carito and he laughs as his HP goes down gradually. Carito starts to wonder if this is how he is going to die and leave everyone behind. Kuradil is about to deliver the final blow when Asuna shows up and throws Kuradil away. She uses a healing potion on Kirito and shows her happiness that she made it in time. She informs Kirito that she is monitoring him on the map and she is able to figure out that something is wrong when Godfrey's marker suddenly disappears. She is happy to have found Kirito alive. She gets up with the intention of annihilating Kuradil. She attacks him repeatedly and Kuradil starts to beg for forgiveness. He falls to his knees and promises to quit the guild and not show his face again. Asuna holds back on attacking him but Kuradil uses the opportunity to grab his sword. He comes at Asuna with full power and he is about to hit her in the head but Kirito jumps in and gets hit instead. The attack cuts off his left hand. Kirito gets infuriated and conjures a powerful attack that he pushes into Kuradil's chest, ultimately eliminating him. He falls to his knees after this and Asuna starts to cry because she blames herself for what happened. She wants Kirito to stop talking to her but Kirito cuts in and says he will never stop talking to her. He kisses her and informs Asuna that his life belongs to her. Asuna then reassures Kirito that she will continue to protect him. He informs Asuna that he would like for them to spend some time alone together that night. Later that day, the duo shared a meal together. Kirito's hand is not back to normal. Asuna goes to sleep with Kirito watching over her. She wakes up to see Kirito beside her. Kirito then informs Asuna that he would like for them to move to a serene area and get married. Asuna is happy to hear this, and she accepts, without hesitation. The following day, Kirito and Asuna inform Heath of their decision to take a leave of absence. Heath grants them the permission, but tells them that he will be expecting them back on the battlefield very soon. He also apologizes for Kuradil's action, and tells them that he will make it known to the rest of the guild. Shortly afterward, Kirito and Asuna get married, and they buy a house by the lake. Asuna assures Kirito that she has real feelings for her and will fall in love with him over again once they return to real life. Her love doesn't end in the game, she says. Asuna wakes up one morning to watch Kirito sleep. She tells him how much she loves him, but Kirito wakes up at that same moment. She is relieved to find out that Kirito didn't hear anything about what she was saying. She suggests that they go somewhere fun for the day. Moments later, the two are out by the lake. Asuna demands that Kirito carry her on his shoulder so she can get a good sight of her surroundings. He agrees to this and carries her on his shoulders. They walk past some people playing at the lake. Kirito is initially shy, but he finds a way to shake it off. He surges ahead with his lover on his shoulders. They soon enter into the woods, and Kirito decides to scare Asuna by telling her that there are ghosts inside the forest. He makes it sound so real that Asuna is already shaky. Suddenly, Asuna looks to her front and she sees a young girl in a white robe. She gets more scared and believes that she has just seen a ghost. She calls Kirito's attention to this. Kirito sees the girl, and while the two are still trying to figure out what they are looking at, the girl falls down. Kirito rushes toward the girl, but Asuna is scared because she thinks the girl is a ghost. Kirito lets her know that the girl is not a ghost and she joins Kirito. They start to wonder what a kid is doing in the woods. They also find out that she has no player icon on her head. This is weird because all players should have an icon over their heads. They conclude that it is due to a bug. They take the girl back to their house with the hope that she will wake up soon enough. Kirito says the girl should have a parent around. They have been able to figure out that she is not an NPC, non-player character, because they wouldn't have been able to move her. Asuna prayed that the girl would wake up. That night, Asuna spends the night beside the girl. The following morning, Asuna turns around to find out that the girl is now awake. She calls Kirito's attention to this. They ask her what happened to her, but she says she doesn't remember. However, she remembers that her name is Yui. Yui finds it hard to pronounce the duo's name and she opts to call them Mama and Papa instead. Asuna is very emotional to hear this and she wastes no time in accepting Yui as her daughter. Asuna makes a meal for them. They make a less spicy food for Yui but she opts to eat out of Kirito's food which is spicy. Kirito is surprised to see her handling so much spice at such a young age. After eating, Yui falls asleep. Kirito talks about the urgency surrounding Yui's matter. They need to get something done about it quickly so that they can return to the front lines. They decide that they will visit the town of Beginnings to see if they can find her parents. Kirito tells Asuna to take her gear with her in case there is a need for it. Shortly afterward, Yui wakes up and the trio heads to the town of the Beginnings. Upon getting there, they ask Yui if she remembers any of the buildings, but she says no. Kirito says the town is big, so there is the possibility that she will not remember the whole setting. As they walk through the town, Asuna asks Kirito how many players he thinks are left in the game, and Kirito says there should be about 6,000 players left. 
Asuna then says the town is supposed to have many players in it. The town is very quiet, and that shouldn't be so. Just then, they hear noise coming from the distance. The two rush over to check out the source of the noise. It turns out that a squad of ALFs is demanding taxes from the players. They have also cornered some kids and asked their guardian to surrender everything she has. All of her pieces of equipment and the kids' pieces of equipment are about to be taken away. Kirito and Asuna jump into the fray and assure the kids that they are now safe. The ALF turns their attention to Kirito and Asuna for disrupting their business. Asuna tells Kirito to take care of the kids while she deals with the bullies. The squad leader tries to attack Asuna but she easily knocks him to the floor. She reminds the guy that he cannot die in the inner areas but he can feel pain. She hits him one more time, forcing the guy and the rest of his squad to run away out of fear. After successfully repelling the bullies, the kid's guardian thanks the two for their help. The kids are also happy and they claim that Asuna is awesome. Suddenly, Yui starts to feel dizzy and she passes out. Soon afterward, Yui regains consciousness as if nothing happened. She is given bread to eat and she consumes it without restraint. They explain to the guardian woman how they found Yui but she says she has not seen her before and she doesn't think she has any parents in the town. She explains to the two how she started gathering the children who were traumatized at the beginning of the game. She started living with them inside the church because they had nowhere to go. Just then, the vice commander of the ALF, Yulie, shows up. They believe that she is there to complain about the treatment of her men the day before, but she informs them that she is there for the opposite. She apologizes for what happened and says she is there to ask for Kirito and Asuna's help. She sits down with them to discuss why she is there. She narrates that the guild leader of the ALF, Thinker, created the organization to provide aid and help to those who need it, and never had any intention of having the sort of oppressive organization that they have become. However, the ALF became too big and Kibao finally created his own faction of the guild. The faction started extorting people under the pretext of collecting taxes. Kibao started looking for ways to eliminate all those who opposed him and would try to get him out of the guild. Thinker is finally ready to get rid of Kibao, but he catches wind of this and lures Thinker into a trap. Thinker has been trapped in a dungeon for the past three days, but his marker is still active, which means he is still alive. It is Yulie's responsibility to help Thinker, but her level is too low. She heard about Asuna and Kirito being in the town, and this is the reason she has come to ask for their help. Kirito and Asuna doubt Yulie's story, but Yui speaks up and says she is telling the truth. The couple decides to listen to Yui and act on Yulie's claim. They agree to help her retrieve their lost leader. They tell Yui to stay, but she insists that she must follow them. They have no choice but to accept and allow her to follow them. They arrive at the dungeon and Kirito is surprised to find out that such a dungeon is available on a lower floor. Yulie says the dungeon is a result of the higher dungeons that have been cleared. Kibao even planned on keeping it to himself so he could be the one getting all the sweet items coming from the dungeon. However, his plan failed because the monsters in the dungeon were quite strong like those on the 60th floor. They cut through the low monsters that they come across to get to the boss's region. They can see Thinker in a safe room in front of them. Yulie rushes toward where he is. She is so excited that she doesn't hear Thinker trying to tell her to get back. She is almost killed by the boss who is lying in wait, but Kirito saves her. Kirito is surprised to find out that the boss is more powerful than he thought. He uses his revealing eyes but can't get any data on the boss. He states that the boss will be nothing less than a level 90 boss. He tells Asuna to get Yui, Yulie, and Thinker out of there, using the teleport crystals. Asuna tells Yulie and Thinker to get Yui and leave. She decides to stay with her lover instead. They try to attack the boss, but he easily knocks the two to the ground and they find it hard to stand up. The boss gets close to them and is about to finish them off when Yui shows up again. She didn't go with Yulie and Thinker when they were going. Kirito screams at her to leave the area, but she assures her mama and papa that she will be fine because she has remembered everything. To Kirito and Asuna's surprise, Yui conjures a fiery attack and uses it to destroy the boss. After this, she sits down to take them to one of the access rooms to talk to them. She explains that the game is controlled by a single large system known as the Cardinal. It was designed to operate without the need for human maintenance. It controls everything that goes on in the SAO at its own discretion. This includes the mental health of the players. The program in charge of this is her, Yui. Kirito and Asuna are shocked to find out that Yui is a computer program. She is an AI who was given the ability to mimic human emotions and know how humans feel. When the game started, Yui was ordered by Cardinal not to interact with any of the players. She is just to monitor the player's mental health. Shortly afterward, the players started coming down with sorrow and despair, but she couldn't engage because she was not allowed to interact with players. Yui was soon filled with errors, causing her to break down. However, one day, she noticed two players, Kirito and Asuna. She realized that their mental parameters were different from the others. The two were happy, 
unlike the rest of the players. She decides to get close to the two, and that is why they found her inside the forest. Kirito and Asuna are happy to hear this. Kirito asks her what she wants, and she says she wants to stay with them forever. The duo accepts this, and they reveal their intentions of wanting to be with her forever too. She then tells them that it is too late already. She says the console she is sitting on gives Game Master emergency access to the system. She used this to erase the monster. However, it is also running a check on her program, and since she went against Cardinal's orders, she is now considered a foreign object that needs to be erased. There is nothing they can do to stop this. Just then, Yui starts to fade away. She begs the two to continue being happy and to share their happiness and joy with the rest of the players. After saying this, she fades away completely. Kirito is not ready to accept this, and he takes control of the console, and he uses the Game Master account to hack into the system. He is able to detach Yui's main program from the system and turn it into an object before she is completely erased. He hands over a tiny piece of stone to Asuna, and informs her that what she is holding is Yui's heart. With this, they will be able to recreate Yui once they return to the real world. Asuna is very happy to hear this as she considers Yui her first child. One afternoon, Kirito is sitting by the lakeside trying to catch fish when an old man, Nishida shows up. He reveals that he is a fisherman in the game, but he was the chief of a network security firm in real life. Kirito has been sitting there for hours without any luck, but Nishida easily catches a fish in under a minute. He explains to Kirito that he wishes that he has soy sauce to eat the fish with, and Kirito says he knows someone who can help. Kirito takes Nishida to his house, and Asuna prepares the meal for them. Nishida's very happy to have tasted something so delicious in a long while. Asuna says Nishida's fishing skill is very high, and she is impressed. He tells Kirito that he cannot catch any fish at the big lake because there is a resident beast living there. He has tried catching the resident beast several times, but it keeps escaping from his grasp. He asks the two for a favor in catching the resident beast. That night, Asuna asks Kirito what he would do if he catches the beast, and Kirito says he will probably keep it as a pet. The following day, people are gathered by the lakeside because everyone wants to take a look at how the beast will be captured. Kirito believes that Nishida is overreacting. He doesn't believe that the beast is as strong as Nishida is taking it to be. Nishida hooks a big bait to the fishing line and throws it into the lake. Shortly afterward, the resident beast gets hooked to the bait. Nishida cries out for Kirito to help him draw the line. Kirito decides to take over completely but finds out that the beast is stronger than he anticipated. He puts more effort and he asks others for help. They rush toward the lake but they all run back without telling Kirito what happened. Without asking, Kirito rushes toward the lake only to find out that the beast is very giant and scary. The fish burst out of the water and Kirito makes a run for it. The beast charges toward the people, but Asuna steps up and takes down the beast in one sweep of attack. Everyone is impressed by this, and they start to cheer for her. In the middle of this, Kirito gets a message notification. The message is from Heath, and he is asking the couple to report to the headquarters because there is an emergency. Asuna says it must be pretty important for Heath to have called them back during their initial leave. The two accept to honor the invitation, but return once they are done with the mission. As they are about to leave the lake village, they are escorted to the portal gate by Nishida. Before they portal away, Asuna tells the man how Kirito is the reason she is now enjoying the game. She counts the game as a normal day she spends in real life and not a waste. Kirito has made her realize what she would never have realized on her own, and that is that every day is worth living. Upon returning to the headquarters, they are informed by Heath that a group of 20 players went to check on the next boss's room, but they and the boss both vanished without a trace. Heath is planning to gather the strongest and highest number of players to check out the boss's room. Kirito then reveals that he takes Asuna's safety as his priority, and he will not hesitate to sacrifice anyone as long as Asuna is safe. Heath agrees with this and says those who have something to protect always turn out to be the best fighters. After the meeting, Kirito tries to convince Asuna to stay back and not come with them for the boss's fight. He is scared that things will go wrong and Asuna will be in trouble. Asuna rejects the option and says she cannot stay back while Kirito plunges into trouble. She mentions how she has been wondering what is going on with their bodies in real life. She is very sure that they are now living in hospitals and being kept under care so that they won't die. She then tells Kirito that they have limited time also because their body will give out one day if they fail to clear the game quickly. This is the reason she cannot stay back while Kirito heads into danger. She cries into Kirito's arms and says she wants to be with him forever, and this includes real life too. Hours later, the attack team starts to gather at the teleport gate on the 75th floor. Klein and Agil are also present among the fighters that will be heading to the boss's room. Shortly afterward, Heath shows up and opens the way to the boss area. They get to the area and Heath makes a speech to encourage the fighters. With confidence, he leads them into the boss's room. They rush into the room, 
but they are surprised to find out that there is no boss waiting for them inside. They stand there in confusion, trying to figure out what is actually wrong. The door locked behind them and they soon find out that the boss is above them. It has been lying in wait on the ceiling of the building. The boss is much scarier and more deadly than they anticipated. The boss they are going to be facing is the Skull Reaper. Heath tells the men to distance themselves to avoid being taken out at once by the Skull Reaper. The boss jumps down and attacks the group. With one hit he takes out several players. They are shocked to find out that the boss only needs one hit to kill them. Heath, Carito, and Asuna are the only people who can actually try to get close to the boss. They put everything they have into the fight because they are not ready to lose. After several blitzes of attack on the boss, they finally defeat it. However, their victory comes at a price too. They lost 14 people to the battle. They are shocked by this because they still have 25 more floors to clear, and things are already getting harder and scarier at the same time. Suddenly, Kirito gets a glimpse of something while he is looking at Heath. He picks up his sword and attacks Heath before he has the time to react. His attack is able to reveal that Heath is an immortal object. The group is surprised and confused at the same time. Kirito then explains that the game will never allow Heath's HP to go below green, no matter what happens. Kirito says he has been wondering how the game is being monitored, and he has come to realize that the developer himself is among them. Heath is none other than Akihiko himself. Everyone's mouth drops when they hear this. Heath doesn't deny this, but he wants to know how Kirito figured it out. Kirito tells him that he found out when they fought the duel. Heath says he regrets fighting Kirito in a duel. He confesses to having used the system's over-assist mode because Kirito's attacks were overwhelming. He then tells the group he is truly Akihiko, and he was supposed to be the final boss that they would have to defeat on the top floor. He reveals that the dual-wielding skill was given to Kirito because he is the player with the fastest reaction time. He is even faster than he had thought. One of the players tries to attack Heath, but he uses the system to paralyze all of them except Kirito. Kirito asks if he plans to eliminate all of them, but he says no. However, he will be waiting for them at the Ruby Palace. Heath then decides to give Kirito a reward for figuring out his identity. He is giving him the chance to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. Heath will deactivate his immortality and the game will be cleared if Kirito manages to defeat him. Asuna begs Kirito not to accept the offer, but the memory of all those who have died flashes through his mind and he accepts the challenge. Before he begins his battle with Heath, Kirito apologizes to Klein for leaving him behind when he did. He also thanks Agil for training players who had little or no idea about the game. He then begs Heath for a favor. He wants him to prevent Asuna from being able to eliminate herself in case he dies in the deathmatch. Heath accesses the system and takes off his immortality. The match between the two begins and Kirito puts it in mind that he needs to defeat Heath with his own strength. He knows all the sword skills in the game, so there is no way he can defeat him using the game techniques. Kirito fights with all his strength, but he soon realizes that he cannot defeat Heath with the way things are going. He apologizes to Asun within himself and hopes that she continues to live on. He hits Heath's shield very hard, and this leads to his sword breaking into two. He is wide open for Heath to eliminate him. As Heath's sword is about to hit Kirito and terminate him, Asuna jumps in between out of nowhere and receives the fatal hit instead. Asuna apologizes to Kirito as she turns into blue specks of dust and disappears. Heath is surprised that Asuna was able to stand up even though she was under paralysis. Kirito is completely devastated at losing his lover. He picks up his sword, but the strength to wield it is gone. Heath easily pushes his sword into Kirito and his HP runs down to zero. Kirito starts to fade away, but his determination not to lose suddenly brings back his avatar. Heath is shocked to see this. Before he can react, Kirito pushes his sword into Heath, thus eliminating him. As of that present moment, which is November 7th at exactly 2.55 p.m., the game gets cleared and the system begins to log out the players. Kirito opens his eyes and finds himself standing in the sky above the game world. He sees Asuna in front of him. She rushes over, hugs him, and kisses him. Just then, Akihiko shows up. He tells them that the game servers are being destroyed as he speaks. The 647 players who survived are also being logged out and their data being erased. The players who died have also died in real life, he says. When asked why why he created the game, he simply says he did it to build a world that transcends the laws of nature. He is happy to have met Kirito who transcended the laws of his own world. He congratulates Kirito and Asuna on clearing the game and disappears. After Akihiko's departure, Asuna asks Kirito what his real life name is and he says Kirigaya Kazuto. Asuna also says her real name is Yuki Asuna. Kirito hears the name and starts to cry for failing on his promise to send Asuna back to the real world. Asuna comforts him and assures him that she is happy. The two hug each other 
together as they fade away. Shortly afterward, Carito opens his eyes in his hospital room. He takes off the nerve gear and realizes that he is finally back in the real world. Days later, Carito wakes up from a nightmare where he sees the game world getting destroyed all over again. He stands up from the bed with his eyes red. He wonders how Asuna would react if she finds out that he has turned into a crybaby. Later that day, he sees his sister, Sugu, practicing her kendo skills in the yard. Sugu doesn't realize quickly that Kirito is behind her. He is surprised to find out about this. Kirito compliments her sword skills and says she has improved more than before. He suggests that they have a sparring session together. Sugu is worried because her brother is just recovering but she has no choice but to accept because Kirito insists. They make their way into the dojo to practice. After wearing their protective gear, the two take their stance. Kirito takes his usual game stance and he is pretty confident that he has what it takes to defeat his sister. Sugu on the other hand believes that Kirito is still the weak boy that he is. The match begins and they charge toward each other. Kirito hits Sugu hard and this comes as a shock to her. She immediately takes the match seriously. She counters all of Kirito's moves and ends up defeating him. Sugu praises Kirito for giving her a tough time. Kirito realizes that he cannot just win the match because of the skills he picked up in the game. He needs real life skills too since he was assisted in the game by the system. He begs Sugu to be his mentor in Kendo so he can pick one or two skills. After the spar session, Kirito reveals his plans to visit Asuna at the hospital where she is receiving treatment. He believes believes that this is the only thing he can do for her at the moment. He narrates how he told the authorities the information he had about Asuna when he came back to real life, and he was able to use this to track Asuna down. He learned that she was admitted to the general hospital. She is among the 300 players who have not regained consciousness after SAO. He makes it to Asuna's room and watches her as she sleeps. Moments later, Asuna's father enters the room. Another man also joins them and Mr. Yuki introduces the man as Sugu. Sugu is the head of Yuki's research lab. Sugu is happy to meet Kirit because everyone knows him as the hero of SAO. During their discussion, Kirito finds out that Sugu is also Asuna's fiancé. He is completely heartbroken to hear this. Yuki soon takes his leave and Sugu is left in the room with Kirit. He is still suffering from the shock of what he just learned from Sugu. After Yuki's departure, Sujo shows his real self. He tells Kirito that Asuna actually doesn't like him but no one knows this. This is the reason he plans to use the comatose state to his advantage. He then tells Kirito a shocking truth. He says the company that developed SAO, Argus, was dissolved after the game was cleared. The server maintenance was entrusted to the electronics company, RCT, where Mr. Yuki serves as CEO. Sugu works in the full dive tech research department. In short, he is the one keeping Asuna alive. He has Asuna's life in his hands, and he can do with it as he pleases. He warns Kiroto not to come to the hospital again. Upon getting back home, Sugu realizes that her sister is not himself. He looks so devastated and even finds it hard to speak. He tells Sugu that everything is hopeless because he cannot save Asuna. Sugu hugs Kirito and tries to encourage him. She hugs Kirito and assures him that he will find a way to sort everything out. He loves Asuna so he shouldn't give up on her. A flashback scene shows Sugu and Kirito's mother at the hospital. The two were the ones taking care of Kirito when he was in the game world. It was during this period that Sugu found out that she was Kirito's cousin and not his direct sister. Sugu also learns that Kiroto has been in love with computers since he was a kid. He has been building computer parts of his own since he was young. Now in the present day, Sugu pets Kirito to sleep and covers him with a duvet to keep him warm. Sugu wakes up the following morning to find out that Kirito has woken up already and he is staring at her. She gets embarrassed and runs out of the room. It seems Sugu is developing romantic feelings for Kirito. After Sugu's departure, Kirito checks his computer to see mail from Agil. The mail contains a recent picture of Asuna. Later that day, Kirito goes to Agil's cafe to ask him about the details of the picture he sent. Agil shows him a new video game that succeeded SAO. The name of the game is Alfheim, which translates to the Land of the Fairies. The game is like SAO, but it has magic included instead of sword skills. Thousands of copies have been sold because people are eager to try it out. Apparently, players can fly inside the game. Since it is a game of fairies, they have the ability to fly. It comes with a flight engine that players get used to over time. Kirito wants to know what Asuna has to do with the game. Agil reveals that the picture was taken inside the game at a location known as Yggdrasil. There is a castle above the Great Tree. The players are divided into nine races who in turn compete to see who reached the castle first. There is a flight duration limit, so it is not possible for the players to get there easily. One day, a group of players were able to get close to the Yggdrasil sill and that is when they took the picture. They zoomed in through the barricade and this is when they noticed something strange. Kirito confirms that the person looks exactly like Asuna. Kirito gets more interested when he realizes that the game is developed by RCT. 
This is the company that Sugu works for. Kirito decides to take the game to his place and Agil accepts. Agil tells him to try his best to rescue Asuna from where she is. Upon getting back home, he sees Sugu and thanks her for her encouragement and assurance because he would have given up if not for her. Kirito enters his room and remembers that he only has one week to rescue Asuna because Sugu will be getting married to her by then. Kirito plugs in the nerve gear and activates the game. He gets to the loading scene and he is requested to select some options which include the race he wants and how his character will look. He ends up picking the Spriggan race. After making his choice, the AI tells him that he will now be transported to the Spriggan town, but something suddenly happens, and he finds himself in the neutral region of the Elder Forest. The date on which Kirito logs into the game is January 20th of the year 2025. Kirito is back in a VR game again after what happened the last time. He confirms if there is the logout option on the menu, and he is relieved to see that he can log out of the game anytime he wants. He checks through his status to find out that he has the same stat that he has in SAO. He is surprised to see this. He checks through his item list, but realizes that everything is corrupted, except one item that he doesn't seem to recognize. He activates the item, and he is shocked to find out that the item is actually Yui's heart. Upon the activation of Yui's heart, the game recreates Yui exactly as she was before. Kirito is relieved to find out that Yui still remembers him. The two hug each other because they have missed each other. Yui is still an AI, so she has the ability to get some crucial information. She is able to deduce that the game is an exact copy of SAO. Kirito realizes that RCT is using the data it acquired from Argus. Yui tells tells Kirito to dispose of the items in his inventory before the system flags it as an error. Kirito then asks Yui what her status is. She informs Kirito that she is classified as a player support artificial personality program. In short, she is a navigation pixie. She then transforms into her pixie's form. She does not have admin access like before, but she has access to wide area maps and reference data. Kirito then tells Yui the reason he has come to the game. Kirito then says he wanted to land close to the Yggdrasil, but he found himself in a whole different location. He stands up from where he is sitting and his wings activate. Yui tells him that he has a controller which he can use to control the wings. He finds it hard to control initially, but he easily gets the hang of it in under some minutes. Yui tells him that there is a sylph territory close by. Just then, Yui informs him that there are some players close by. We then see two sylph members, Liafa and Recon, being chased by a bunch of salamander players. Liafa manages to take down most of the enemy players, but Recon gets eliminated in the process. Liafa is also knocked to the ground and she is surrounded by enemies. Out of nowhere, Kirito shows up and rescues Liafa. Leifa. He easily defeats the players after Leafa like they are nothing. He terminates all of the enemy players, leaving only one who begged to be spared. The enemy death sites leave a burning flame for some seconds and Leifa tells Kirito not to speak when the flame is still active because they will still be able to hear them. After the flames have died out, Leifa tells Kirito that he can now ask her what he wants to know. Yui comes out of where she is hiding and Leifa is surprised to find out that Kirito is in the company of a pixie. Kirito reveals that he is lost and Leafa makes fun of him because his territory is due east. She thanks Kirito for saving her and decides to thank him over a drink. Kirito accepts the offer because this would be a good opportunity for him to learn new things from Leafa. They are to head to the nearest sylph village to do this. Leafa informs Kirito that he will not be able to attack once he is in the village but he can be attacked. They will need to fly to the village because it is somewhat far. Kirito reveals that he is still using a controller for his wings, but Liafa shows him how he can fly without the controllers. She explains that everything deals with the muscles. With this, Kirito is able to get a hang of it without the controllers, and he starts to fly. Liafa is surprised to find out that Kirito is able to learn quickly. He is even able to match her flying speed, and Kirito is one of the few people to be able to match up to her speed. They soon arrive at the village, but Kirito makes an awkward landing that costs him some of his HP. Leifa uses her magic to heal Kirito. She then explains that there are differences in the magic that each race can perform. The Spriggans, which Kirito belongs to, are good in treasure hunting skills and illusionary magic. They are in the middle of this discussion when Recon shows up again. Leifa introduces them to each other and assures Recon that Kirito is not a spee. Moments later, the two make their way to an inn. They sit down to drink and talk at the same time. Liafa reveals that she has no relationship with Recon. He is nothing more than his party member. However, she also knows him in real life because they are in the same school. Kirito wonders why the Salamander players are after Liafa, and she says the two races are not on good terms. Kirito then makes mention of the great tree Yggdrasil. Leafa tells him that he will not be able to get to the top because there is a flight duration. It is said that the first race to reach the floating city will hold an audience with Oberon the Fairy King. The race that accomplishes this will have all its members transformed into a superior race called the Alf. There is a dome at the base of the tree that players can use to launch to the top, but it is protected by several guardian NPCs. It would have been nice if all the players could cooperate to get to the top, 
but they won't do this because the reward is only for one race. Kirito then reveals that he is looking for someone and he is pretty desperate. He doesn't have much time to spare and he needs to get to the top of the tree as quickly as possible. Liefa decides to help Kirito on his quest because he doesn't know his way around in the first place. They decide to begin their journey tomorrow. The two will log out and meet again at the inn the next day. Liefa logs out and when she opens her eyes to the real world, we get to find out that Liafa is none other than Kirito's sister, Sugu. The two have no idea that they are family in real life. Before Kirito logs out, Yui requests to lie down beside him and he accepts. On the other hand, Asuna is being held prisoner on top of the great tree. Sugu is her captor and all he is trying to do is get her to accept him as his lover. However, Asuna refuses and says all she has for Sugu is disgust. Sugu then explains that he has developed a program that allows him to mess with the players. He can manipulate their memories and emotions. He was able to grab 300 players from those who cleared the SAO game. These are the players who have not regained consciousness and Asuna is one of them. He is able to do all of this because Mr. Yuki is not aware. All the shady deal is between Sugu and his team, which are made up of a small group of researchers. He plans to sell the result of the experiment to an American organization. Asuna says she will expose Sugu when she returns to the real world, but he reminds her that he can easily wipe her memories off. Sugu has no fear whatsoever about what Asuna wants to do. Up next, Sugu reveals why she decided to start gaming. She started gaming when his brother got trapped in the gaming world. She is now engrossed with this new game. She loves the fact that she can fly and this makes her feel more special. Later on, Sugu runs into Rikon, who is known as Nagata in real life. Sugu has warned Rikon not to call her by her in-game name, but he always forgets. Rikon informs Sugu about the mission that Sigurd and his party will be going to that afternoon, but Sugu says she will not be available. She will be indisposed for a while because she will be going to Alni, which is the base of the Great Tree. Rikon gets somewhat jealous that Sugu is going with Kirito. Later that afternoon, Sugu logs into the game and she meets with Kirito at the inn. They visit a blacksmith to get Kirito a much better weapon. After leaving the blacksmith shop, they head to a tower where they are to launch to get more altitude. As they prepare to leave, they are approached by Sigurd and the rest of the party. Sigurd demands that Leafa returns to the party at once, but she reminds him of their deal. She once told him that she could exit the party anytime she wanted, and Sigurd agreed back then. Sigurd gets angry and wants to force Leafa, but Kirito steps in. Sigurd draws his sword, but one of his men informs him that he will look bad if he attacks an unharmed man, and Sigurd is forced to sheathe his sword. He promises Leafa that she will regret becoming a renegade and leaves. The two get to the top of the tower, and Kirito is amazed at how beautiful everything looks from up there. Just then, Recon shows up to tell Leafa that he would love to follow the two on their mission, but he is currently carrying out an investigation in the party. He feels that something is wrong and he wants to know what it is. He needs more time to gather evidence of the evil he believes is happening inside of the party. The two leap off the tower and start to fly toward the great tree. Meanwhile, Sugu is seen tormenting Asuna as usual. Asuna teases Sugu and says Kirito is coming to save her, but Sugu replies that he has found a way to crush Kirito's spirit. He is confident that Kirito will never touch a nerve gear again. He even plans to invite Kirito to his wedding, to spite him more. As Sugu is about to leave, Asuna makes sure to take a peek at the gate's security code. She calls out the numbers to avoid forgetting them. Up next, Kirito and Liafa are still on their journey to the tree. They cut down monsters that they come across on their way. The two decide to rest because their flight duration will soon be exhausted. Liafa then suggests that they make a rotation. She needs to log out and attend to some things before it is too late. Once she is back, Kirito will also log out to attend to his own business. This will also serve as a break for them. One person will be in charge of taking care of the avatar, while the other is gone. Liafa is the first to log out. When she gets to life, she contemplates whether to check on her brother, but she decides not to. She believes that Kirito is sleeping and wouldn't want to disturb him. She goes to the bathroom to take a shower. While she's inside the bathroom, all she keeps thinking about is Kirito. It turns out that she has completely fallen for Kirito, but she is not ready to accept that. That fact. She believes that she is just used to Kirito because they do fly together. Before returning to the game, she makes a sandwich and leaves it for her brother in case he later wakes up and leaves his room. She returns to the gaming world and Kirito switches out to the real world. After he is gone, Leifa begins to talk to Yui about what love is. She is about to get deeper when Kirito returns to the gaming world. Leifa makes sure to keep Yui shut from revealing what she is talking about. Since the two are now refreshed, it is time for them to continue their journey. However, Kirito says he has the feeling that they are being watched. He tells Yue to scan for nearby players. She does this and informs the two that there are no signs of any player. Leifa then says the culprit might have used a tracking spell. The culprit will make use of a small familiar and order it to track down his or her target. Once they are able to locate the tracer, they can easily destroy it. Kirito believes that he is just being paranoid, 
and decides that they should continue with their journey. As the two fly away, a bat appears from behind and continues to tail them. Soon afterward, the two make it to a tunnel that they need to pass through to get to their destination. As they walk through the tunnel, Leafa tries teaching him some basic incantations that might be useful for him later. She tries to explain to him how to go about it to make things easy for him. Kirito is already tired of how stressful it is to get around the basic spells, not to talk about the advanced ones. Suddenly, Leifa receives an email from Recon, warning them that they are being tracked. Yui immediately finds out that enemy players numbering up to 12 are following them. Leafa suggests that they hide and wait for them to pass. They go close to the wall and Leafa does a magic trick that creates an illusionary wall in front of them. She tells Kirito to speak silent to prevent the spell from breaking off. Kirito looks closely and he is able to deduce that they are not being followed by a player but a bat. Leafa gets frantic when she hears this. She reveals that the bat is a high-level tracing searcher and they need to destroy it immediately. The bat tries to escape but Leafa takes it down with her long range attacks. She informs Kirito that they need to run away because whoever is tracking them already knows their location. She is very sure that the party that is following them belongs to the salamander. The duo soon finds a lake that has a long bridge running over it. The bridge leads to the gate that the two are heading to. Liafa warns Kirito not to fall into the lake under them. They are about to make it to the gate when they are blocked by the enemy's attack. Kirito tries to cut down the wall erected in front of them, but Leafa says physical attacks are of no use. Kirito thinks of jumping into the lake, but Leafa says there is a monster living inside the lake. They have no choice but to fight the enemies that are after them. Kirito tells Leafa to stay back while he takes on the enemies. He wants Leafa to heal him anytime his HP goes down. He charges toward the enemy, but Leafa is able to deduce that the enemy's formation is built in such a perfect way to counter Kirito. Kirito's first attack is repelled, and he gets hit by a counterattack. Leafa heals him, and he repeats the same technique over and over again, but there is no progress. He doesn't want to give up on the fight. Kirito charges toward the shield unit in front of him and tries to rip off their shields. Yui then advises Leafa to use the rest of her mana to create a shield for Kirito. She is doubtful of this, but she eventually follows Yui's advice. She creates a shield around Kirito, and this is able to repel the enemy's attack. Yui then tells Kirito to use his magic. Kirito chants his illusionary magic and this turns him into a scary monster. This is enough to put fear in the mind of the shield unit and they break their line. Kirito goes after them and starts taking them out one by one. The leader of the squad tries telling his team that the scary monster is just an illusion but no one is ready to listen. Kirito easily takes out the entirety of the squad except one. Liafa asks him to spare the last one so they can ask him questions. Kirito offers to give the guy all the loot he got from the fight if he tells them they want to know. He reveals that their squad leader, Gtax, sent a text message to them that they will be going out to hunt down two people who beat the head of the Lancer unit, Kagamuni. Gtax was ordered to do so by those at the top because they claimed that Kirito was interfering in their affairs. The guy knows that something is wrong, but he doesn't know what is. Earlier that day, a bunch of soldiers are gathered and they head to the north. After telling them all of this, Kirito keeps to his deal and hands over all the loot to the guy. After getting the info they need, they proceed to the town after the bridge, Lagru. Kirito asks Leafa if she got a message before they were attacked and she says yes. She tries to contact Recon but finds out that he is not online. Kirito suggests that she logs out and contacts him in real life. She accepts to do this and asks Kirito and Yui to watch over her avatar while she is gone. She is shocked to find lots of missed calls on her phone and everything is from Recon. She contacts Recon and he reveals that Sig Sigurd is a bad guy. He has even found a way to get rid of their leader, Sakuya. He informs Kirito that he wore an invincibility cloak and followed Sigurd. He catches him having a meeting with Salamanders. This was when he found out that they had a tracer on Kirito and Leafa. However, he was captured, and he is being held by the Salamanders. This is the reason he has been trying to reach Kirito in the real world. He adds that Sakuya is signing a treaty of alliance with the Kate Sith today. This is the reason she set out for the neutral zone in absolute secrecy. Sigurd plans to attack the ceremony with a large salamander army. Upon hearing this, Leifa heads back into the game and informs Kirito that there is something that she needs to attend to. She starts running back and Kirito joins her. She fills him in on what the problem is as they head toward the conference site. Leifa reveals that the salamander has the most to gain in the conflict. Sylph will be the most affected, and this is the reason she needs to prevent the conflict from happening, even though there is the possibility that she will die. Leifa stops for a minute and gives Kirito the opportunity to team up with the salamanders because he has a better chance of reaching the top of the great tree with the salamanders behind him. Kirito stops Leifa and says he doesn't just take the game as a normal game. He brings his morals and beliefs into the game. He will not go against his real life practice inside the game, he insists. He adds that he likes Leifa and he would like to be her friend. Leifa is very happy to hear this 
and the visible blush can be seen all over her face. Kurito grabs Leafa and they make a speed break through the tunnel. This is so much excitement for Leafa and she is visibly smiling when they make it out. She informs Kurito that they have less than 20 minutes to prevent the salamanders from achieving their goal. Yui is able to sense an army of salamanders that number up to 68 players approaching the meeting site. The Kates and the Sylphs have also seen the salamanders and they are surprised as to how the enemy knows their location. The salamanders are about to begin their onslaught when Kirito shows up and demands that everyone put away their sword. Sakuya asks Lafa what is going on and she tells him that she should calm down because their fates now rest on Kirito's hands. Kirito demands to speak to the salamander commander and a man, General Eugene, shows up. He appreciates Kirito's confidence and says he will only listen to him because of that. Kirito claims that he is an ambassador for the Spriggan Undine Alliance. He informs Eugene that once he carries out his attack on the group, he is automatically asking for war against the four races, Kate Sith, Undine, Sylph, and Spriggan. Eugene doesn't believe that Kirito is an ambassador because he has no escort, and Kirito assures him that he will regret it if he attacks the meeting. Eugene then proposes an offer to Kirito. He tells him that he will consider him an ambassador if he manages to survive 30 seconds of his attack. Kirito wastes no time in accepting the offer, but Sakuya believes that they are in a bit of a mess. Sakuya informs Leafa that the sword Eugene is wielding is known as the Demon Sword, Graham. The wielder, Eugene, is also formidable. He is the younger brother of Mortimer, the salamander leader. These two are also brothers in real life. Mortimer is the strategist while Eugene is the warrior. Eugene is considered the game's strongest player. Leafa hears this and comes to a shock because they all believe that Kirito is done for. The match begins and Eugene charges toward Kirito. Kirito tries to block his attack but the demon sword phases through it, giving Eugene the opportunity to land a fatal blow. Kirito manages to survive and he shows his face amidst all the dust again. Eugene is surprised to see Kirito alive but he still doesn't mind. Eugene continues to get the hit on Kirito but he manages to survive for 30 seconds. When the time hits 30 seconds, Kirito reminds Eugene, but Eugene says he is not honoring the deal again. He is now choosing to end Kirito instead. Kirito gets more serious when he hears this. Their fighting skills are of the same level, but Eugene's sword is giving the advantage. As the fight gets more intense, Kirito releases a smoke screen that blinds everyone in the vicinity. Eugene clears out the smoke, but sees no traces of Kirito. He manages to grab Leifa's sword during the ruckus. Everyone thinks Kirito has run away in the middle of the fight, but he suddenly shows up from above. Eugene tries to block Kirito's attack, but he surprises him with the other sword. Eugene has no response to this, and Kirito delivers several cuts to his body. Eugene tries to fight back, but Kirito already has the upper hand and he cuts Eugene into two very easily. Everyone is left in shock when Kirito defeats the person known as the strongest player in the game. After the dust settles, Sakuya takes Eugene's death flame and uses that to revive him. Eugene comes back and he commends Kirito's fighting skills. Eugene has no choice but to believe that Kirito is an ambassador and he will not be willing to risk a war with the other four races. Eugene takes his men and leaves after they have come to a conclusion. He and Kirito even have a fist bump before he leaves. Liafa then informs Sakuya that Sigurd is the culprit. Sakuya realizes that Sigurd has been showing signs of dissatisfaction lately. He wants more power and he believes that the Sylphs are weak. He wants them to be the top race in the game. Mortimer must have offered him a deal to bring the head of the Sylphs leader so he could make him a salamander. It is said that there is an update coming that will allow for players' conversion. Sakuya then tells the Kaith's leader, Lu, to open a mirror portal to where Sigurd is. Sigurd is shocked to find out that Sakuya is still alive. However, he is confident that nothing will happen to him because he is the commander of the army and Sakuya cannot do without him. However, Sakuya shocks him and informs him that she is banishing him from the clan. Since he is not content with how the clan operates, he is free to become a renegade and live his life in the neutral regions. Lu closes the portal before Sigurd can protest against this. Sakuya and Lu thank Kirito for saving them. Kirito then informs them of his plan to go to the Great Tree. Sakuya and Lu tell Kirito that they are also making plans to get to the top of the tree. Kirito opens his inventory and gives the duo an enormous amount of money to help them get everything sorted quickly. Kirito informs them that he is desperate to get there because he came to the game world to see someone who is staying on the Great Tree. After sorting everything out, the group leaves. Kirito and Leafa continue their journey to Alne after this. Meanwhile, Asuna has managed to break out of her cage using the passcode she saw Sugu entering into the lock. Leafa and Kirito soon make it to Alne the city that is considered the largest city in the game. The system drops an announcement that the game server will be shutting down from that day, 
which is January 22nd from 4 a.m. until 3 p.m. for scheduled maintenance. All players are to log out of the game 10 minutes before the server shuts down. Kirito and Liafa decide to find an inn where they can log out from. On the other hand, Asuna is still trying to find a way out of the Great Tree. She soon comes across a tunnel. She finds a map that can lead her to a room where she can find a console to log out with. She realizes that the room will be an experiment room. She remembers Sugu talking about the experiment he is carrying out. Now in real life, Sugu and Kirito are making breakfast. Sugu asks to come to the hospital with Kirito when he wants to go check on Asuna, and he accepts. Asuna makes it to the laboratory where she realizes that Sugu has the subject's brains on a machine. He is using this to monitor what they are feeling, and he is also using this to filter their emotions. Two squid-like players are working in the lab. Soon afterward, Kirito and Sugu start their journey to the hospital to see Asuna. On the bus, Kirito tells Asuna that he is not ready to go back to school because they have opened a new school for those of them who were trapped in SAO. He has a strong belief that they are trying to monitor them this way. On the other hand, Asuna has managed to evade the two squid guys and she has found a console which she can use to get out of there. He activates it with the admin card she found on the console. As she is about to log out with a smile on her face, the two squid guys show up behind her. In the real world, Kirito and Sugu make it to the hospital. She is surprised at how big the hospital is. Upon getting to Asuna's room door, Sugu reveals her shock that Asuna used her real name in the game. There are few people who do that. They enter the room, and Kirito introduces Asuna to Sugu. Meanwhile, Asuna is still struggling with the squid guys who have used their tentacles to grab her. The two plan to have fun with Asuna because she is absolutely beautiful. Asuna scolds the two for participating in such an inhuman an experiment that is being carried out in the lab. She reminds them that they are scientists and shouldn't be doing things that will hurt humanity. The two don't even pay attention to what she is saying. One of them decides to log out to ask Sugu what to do with Asuna. Moments later, the guy returns. He reveals that Sugu is angry. He demands that they return Asuna to her cage and change the passcode too. Asuna loses all sense of hope as she is being dragged away from where the console is back to her cage. In real life, Kirito and Sugu look at her with all compassion as she lies on her hospital bed. Sugu decides to leave because she sees the way Kirito is looking at Asuna. She doesn't want to be a bad sister to Kirito. She loves him, but doesn't want to hurt him either. Asuna is returned to confinement, but the guys have no idea that she has the admin card with her. She promises herself that she will keep on fighting no matter what happens. Later on, Kirito and Leafa log in back to the game. Kirito realizes that Leafa is crying, and he asks him why. She tells Kirito that she is heartbroken, but doesn't tell him the whole gist. Sugu loves Kirito so much, but she cannot tell anybody how she feels. She lays her head on Kirito's shoulder and cries bitterly. After she has calmed down, the two leave the inn to continue with the mission at hand. They find out that there are several races in the city. All races come to the city without discrimination of sorts. The two make it to the base of the great tree and all Kirito can do is look up. Leafa informs him that there is a barrier before someone can get to the top of the great tree. The two pass through the gate to be in the central district of Alne, which is the heart of the game world. Just then, Yui emerges and informs Kirito that Asuna is directly above them in the sky. Kirito is shocked to hear this. Without thinking twice, he lifts off the ground and heads to the sky. Leafa is surprised to see Kirito acting without giving it a second thought. She wonders if the person he is rushing to see is so important to him that he is willing to risk himself. He does not even care about the barrier that is above them. Kirito hits the barrier but continues to hit without caring about his HP. Yui uses her powers to call out to Asuna to confirm if she is there. Asuna hears this, and she gets excited immediately. However, she needs something to throw down to let them know that she is there. She throws down the admin card she has with her. Yui is able to deduce that the card is an access code. She needs a console to use it. They realize that Asuna must have heard them, and that is the reason she threw down the card. Leafa informs Kirito that there is a dome at the base that can get them into the Great Tree, but it is practically impossible because there are guardians that have been put in place to keep the area safe. Even a large army will find it tough to get through. Kirito thanks Leafa for her help, and says he will now be continuing on his own. He leaves Leafa in the air and heads down to the dome. Yui knows where the dome is so she can easily lead him to where it is. Kirito is ready to risk anything to rescue Asuna. Upon Responding to the gate, Kirito receives the notification to accept the quest for a grand quest called the Guardians of the World Tree, and he does so. He accepts the task and the system wishes him luck on his journey of proving that he is worthy of flying high in the sky. The gate opens and Kirito proceeds inside. He tells Yui to keep her head down to prevent her from getting hurt. Kirito lifts off the ground and heads to the sky. He easily cuts down the first few Guardians that emerge from the dome. However, 
He soon realizes that there is no stop to the number of guardians that he will come across. The more he cuts them down, the more they show up. However, he is not ready to give up because he knows the only way to get to Asuna is through the guardians. He gets into a mess when guardians with arrows show up and starts firing thousands of arrows at him. This still does not stop him as he tries to reach the top. He is impaled with multiple swords to stop him from getting to his destination. His HP continues to drop down, and he eventually dies from the attack. He now has 500 seconds to respawn back into the game. He thinks about how he can beat the game as he falls to the ground gradually. He has always believed that he is superior to the game and can overcome any limit that is in front of him. Just then, he sees Leafa approaching him. He is worried about her and hopes that she will go back. However, Leafa tries her best and manages to grab Kirito's death flame. She gets to the ground and manages to fly out of the dome before she is annihilated. The gate closes behind them and Leafa uses one of the items in her possession to revive Kirito. Kirito thanks Leafa for her help, but informs her not to do something that risky again. He stands up and heads toward the gate again. She is stopped by Leafa who confesses her feelings to him. She lets him know that she is in love with him and would not want to lose him. Kirito then tells Leafa that he needs to see Asuna before another chapter of his life can begin. This is the first time he will be mentioning the name of the person he is desperate to see. Leafa hears this and takes a step back. She is thrown into shock when she hears this. She remembers going to the hospital to see Asuna with her brother. She calls Kirito by his real name, and Kirito is also shocked to find out that he has been dealing with his sister all this while. Leafa is overwhelmed by this discovery, and she logs out before Kirito can stop her. Sugu returns to the real world with tears in her eyes. Kirito comes knocking on her door, but she tells him to leave her alone. Kirito doesn't know what is wrong with her. He reveals that he was also surprised to find find out that Leafa is Sugu. Sugu opens the door and reveals that she is in love with the real-life Kirito, Kirigaya. She thought she could forget about Kirigaya by falling in love with the Kirito she met inside the game. Kirito tries to point out that they are siblings, but Sugu stops him. She says she already knows that they are not siblings and this is the reason she allowed her feelings to manifest. She was so happy when Kirito came back from SAO but she soon realizes that her feelings for him might hurt Asuna. This is why she tried to fall in love with someone inside the game. She goes back into her room and closes the door in Kirito's face. She lies down on her bed and continues crying. Kirito also sits by the door to think about everything that just hit him. Kirito narrates how he felt the first day he learned about Sugu not being his sister. He was not the biological son of his parents and this made him feel somehow. He distances himself from Sugu and finds it hard to relate to people because he has the belief that he will be disappointed in the end. However, SAO has made him realize that there is no point in wondering who people really are. All he just needs to do is accept them for who they are. When he came back to the real world, he saw Sugu's face and he was genuinely happy to see her. This was when he made the decision to rebuild the relationship they had. However, he doesn't know what he can do for Sugu. Kirito stands up to leave the door, but he tells Sugu that he will be waiting for her at Alne. After he leaves, Sugu accepts that Kirito is emotionally strong and she will one day want to be like him. Sugu logs into the game to meet Kirito where he said they would. She wonders what she's going to say to him. She's in the middle of this thought when Recon shows up. Recon reveals that he managed to escape from the salamanders who captured him. He also confesses his love to Sugu, but she kicks him in the crotch. She calls him an idiot and doesn't take his world seriously. Recon words are able to get to Sugu, and she cheers up. Moments later, Sugu makes her way to where Kirito is. Before Kirito can say anything, she stops her and demands that they have a duel. She asks Kirito not to hold back. The match begins and the two charge at each other. She flies into the air and Kirito follows her. The two find it hard to hit each other and they end up hugging each other. Kirito apologizes to Sugu and reveals that he has not truly come back from his life in Asao. He needs to see Asuna before he can begin a new life. Sugu sees this as good news and reveals that she is ready to wait for him to come back from his life in Asao. She is also ready to help him achieve his goal of reuniting with Asuna. The two are able to come to a satisfactory solution. Sugu then informs Recon that they will be taking on the Guardians to get to the top of the Great Tree. Yui will also be with them. Yui was able to gather some information from Kirito's first fight with the Guardians. She reveals that the Guardians are weak and they can be easily defeated. However, they spawn very quickly which makes them invincible. She then adds that it won't be difficult for Kirito to break through given the level of his skills. Kirito then officially asks for Sugu and Nagata's help. The two accept to help him and support him with everything they have. He tells them to stay back and heal him whenever he gets hit. The trio enters into the dome and Kirito engages the Guardians while the two heal him as planned. However, Sugu and Recon soon get targeted by the Guardians too. Recon takes matters into his hands and heads directly into the danger zone. He casts a powerful spell when he is in the middle of the Guardians. He ultimately self destructs himself to destroy a bunch of Guardians. Recon's sacrifice is still not enough for Kirito to get through. He is taken down by the Guardians, and as his HP drops down, Sugu tries healing him, but the Guardians surround her to prevent her from doing this. Just then, the Sylph army and the Kate Sith's Dragon Cavalry 
show up to provide assistance. The Dragon Cavalry releases their fire breath on the dragons, while the Sylph army does extra damage from the sides. With the extra support that they have received, Sugu and Kirito are able to concentrate on the primary task. They continue their advance to the top while the Dragon Cavalry blasts away the Guardians. Sugu steps back for Kirito to head to the roof. He throws her sword to Kirito to help him cut through the Guardians more effectively. With determination and power, Kirito is able to cut through the Guardians and hit the roof. Just as he hits the roof, the Guardians stop attacking him. The Sylph army and the Kate Cavalry then retreat him immediately. Kirito now needs a way to open the giant gate. Yui reveals that it can only be opened using system administrative privileges. In short, the door cannot be opened by players. Just then, guardians emerge from the walls and have the two surrounded again. Suddenly, Kirito remembers the admin card that Asuna threw down for them. She then copies the code from the card. She is able to open the door with this. The two prepare to be teleported away, and they hold each other's hands. The two find themselves in the golden tunnel, and Yui reveals that Asuna is very close. They start running toward the treetop, where Asuna's cage is located. Asuna has her head on the table when the two arrive. Yui breaks open the door and Asuna bursts into tears. She is very happy to see the two. She expresses her joy and says she has always been confident that Kirito will come to his rescue. Kirito asks Yui if she can log Asuna out, but Yui replies that Asuna's status is being restricted by some complex code. They are going to need a system console to remove it. There is one in the library that they can use for that. Just then, Sugu shows up and uses a gravity attack to turn Yui into dust before pinning Kirito and Asuna to the ground. Kirito tries to fight back, but Sugu easily kicks him to the floor. He holds all the power and there is nothing the two can do about it. He informs them that the gravity attack he used will be coming in the next game update. He tells them that the experiment he is carrying out is 80% complete. Since he has all the time in the world, he decides to play with Asuna. He brings out chains and uses them to string Asuna up. He is ready to have fun with Asuna. Kirito cannot take this and he starts to struggle in order to stand up. Sugu gets angry and kicks him to the ground again. He then pushes his sword into him. He activates a system option called the Pain Absorber, which increases the level of pain a player feels as the gauge decreases. He turns it down to level 8 and informs Kirito that he will feel it in real life once he dials it down to 3. Kirito can no longer do anything but watch as Sugu tears off Asuna's shirt. He licks Asuna's body and laughs hysterically as he does so. Kirito is so heartbroken that he cannot do anything about the situation. He finds himself in another dimension as he starts to accept his fate. Just then, he hears Akihiko's voice, asking him if he's ready to give up. Kirito says yes because Sugu holds all the power in the game. Akihiko stops him and reminds him that he once transcended the laws of the game he created. This is the first time Akihiko saw that human will can transcend a system. Akihiko encourages Kirito and tells him to get up. This is enough motivation for Kirito and he manages to get up on his feet, leaving Sugu completely shocked. Sugu tries to hit Kirito but he easily grabs his hand. Kirito commands the system and he uses Heathcliff's ID to access the system. Sugu is shocked to see this. Kirito asks the system to change the admin privileges and set Sugu's ID to level 1. Sugu is shocked to find out that Heathcliff's ID is higher than his. Kirito then reminds him that he is not the creator of the game. He stole everything and made it his own. He is just a thief dancing on a throne, Kirito says. Sugu gets angry and orders the system to bring forth the legendary weapon known as Excalibur, but the system doesn't respond. Kirito then orders the system to bring bring forth Excalibur, and it does so without hesitation. He then throws the legendary sword to Sugu and gives him the chance to defend himself. Kirito takes it further and dials down the pain absorber to zero. Kirito tells Sugu that Akihiko will always be a better man than he ever was. Sugu cries out bitterly and he curses Akihiko for still getting in his way even after his death. Sugu tries to fight, but he has no chance against Kirito. Kirito plays with him and cuts him in the cheek to cause him pain before cutting off his right hand. After this, he pushes his sword into him and cuts him in half. He then picks up his head and destroys it, ultimately ending Sugu's influence and character in the game. After this, Kirito sets Asuna free and the two hug each other. Asuna tells Kirito that she has always believed in Kirito. It is time for Kirito to log Asuna out of the game. Asuna says she will be waiting for him at the hospital because he is the first person she wants to see. Kirito promises to come see her and he logs her out of the game. After Asuna is gone, Kirito calls out for Heathcliff because he knows that he is around. Heathcliff shows up and Kirito reveals his surprise that Akihiko is still alive. Heathcliff then says he is alive in some sense and he is also not alive in another sense. 
He is merely an echo of Akihiko's consciousness or what is a residual image. Kirito thanks him for his help, but Heathcliff says there is no need to thank him. He demands compensation in return. Akihiko brings forth a shining egg and reveals that it is called the seed. Akihiko says the seed will give rise to whole new worlds. He says Kirito will know better once it starts to bud. Kirito then has the option to do with it what he wants. He can even delete it and forget about it forever if he still has some shred of hatred for the SAO world. Heathcliff leaves and says they will meet again. After his departure, Yui Yui shows up again and says she was able to stay alive by taking refuge in the local memory of Kirito's nerve gear. Yui is so happy that everything turned out fine. She informs Kirito that her core program is stored in his nerve gear. With this, they will always be together forever. Kirito logs out and comes back to the real world. He finds Sugu sitting beside him, waiting for him to come back. Kirito thanks him for her help and says he wouldn't have been able to achieve his goal without Sugu. The two hug each other before he tells her that he will soon be leaving to see Asuna at the hospital. As Kirito leaves, he promises to introduce Asuna to Sugu properly the next time they meet. Kirito rides through the snowy weather to get to the hospital. He parks his bike in a distance to continue the rest of the journey on his leg. As he gets to the parking lot, he is attacked by Sugu who has been waiting for him. Sugu cuts his hand with a knife. Sugu says he is there to eliminate Kirito for what he did to him. He keeps coming at Kirito, but he manages to evade his attacks. Sugu pushes him to the floor and mocks him for not having any power or strength to stop him. He cuts Kirito in the face to hurt him more. Kirito looks up and sees that Sugu's right eye is affected because of the pain he suffered from the execution he gave him in the game. Kirito then realizes that Sugu is nothing but a scam and coward. Sugu comes at Kirito again, but he grabs the knife this time around and turns the situation in his favor. Sugu tries to run away, but Kirito grabs him, and the temptation to eliminate Sugu comes in as he remembers everything inhuman main he did to Asuna. However, he is able to control himself, and he leaves Sugu alive. Kirito gets to Asuna's hospital door, but he looks overwhelmed. Yui then reminds him that Asuna is waiting for him. He walks into the room and tells Asuna that everything is now over. The duo introduce themselves since this is the first time they will be meeting in real life. They lock lips and hug each other at the same time. By the 16th of May 2025, everyone including Kirito who was trapped in SAO now attends the newly opened school that is dedicated to them. Kirito and Asuna meet under a tree to discuss. Everyone in the school knows each other, and Kirito especially. Asuna brings out the lunch she has prepared for the two of them. She then reveals that her father has decided to retire because he was overwhelmed with everything that happened. Kirito then narrates how Sugu was arrested and he had no choice but to confess to everything when one of those who worked for him showed up as a witness. The 300 players who were also comatose woke up, and they were introduced to the society slowly. The VR games were also shut down because of backlash that they received. Asuna asks Kirito what happened to Akihiko. He reveals that he ended his own life, but there is a rumor that he copied his consciousness onto the net. Kirito remembers speaking to Akihiko's consciousness, and this makes him believe that what they said is true. Meanwhile, Lisbeth is looking at the two from the classroom window, and she is clearly jealous. Silica reminds her that she is the one who gave the duo one month to act lovey-dovey. She then talks about the offline meeting that they will be having later that day. Later that day, Sugu accompanies Kirito and Asuna to Agil's bar, where the offline meeting will be held. They enter the hall to find out that everybody is already waiting for Kirito. He is addressed as the hero of SAO and given a special reception as an appreciation for clearing the game. Kirito then goes to Agil and asks him for an update concerning the seed he gave him. Kirito narrates that he gave the seed to Agil for analysis after he rescued Asuna. They found out that the seed was capable of running the full dive VR environment that Akihiko had created. As long as you have your own server and bandwidth, you can create your own virtual world on the internet. The seed is open for everyone to use. Thankfully, the VR games that were dying were resurrected. Alfheim Online also had all its data transferred to a new company that now runs it. Other administrators also began running their own game servers. The games are connected to each other and a player can jump in between games. Agil then reveals that the players will be meeting that night by 11 p.m. for a meeting in Yggdrasil City. That night, Sugu is seen in the game testing her flight limit. She reaches her limit and comes crashing down, but she is caught by Kirito. She asks him why he is not using his SAO's character since they have copied the data. Kirito reveals that he has closed the SAO chapter and he is not ready to go back to it. This makes Sugu happy, and she demands that they dance together. She lightens the sky while they dance together. After they are done dancing, Sugu wants to return home because she is not ready to attend the meeting, but Kirito says there is no chance for that. He grabs her hand and drags her close to the great tree where she can see the moon very well. Just then, Aincrad, the floating castle of Esau, emerges. Kirito reveals that they are planning to do everything the proper way. They are going to clear all of the 100 floors in the castle. Kirito has also reset his status attributes, so he's pretty weak now. He asks Sugu to help him, and she accepts with tears of joy coming out of her eyes. Shortly afterward, other players show up to get the game running. 